read some verses from that chapter. Actually, chapter 2. James chapter 2. If I were to ask you to name a master theologian, could you do it? Can you think of, I would say, the master theologian? This person would be one who has talked with God, who has interacted with God, and thus doesn't think he exists, but knows he exists, and through those interactions has had quite an extensive experience of God's attributes. Can you think of a being that fits those qualifications? Well, the person I'm pointing out at this time is Satan. For Satan has done all of those things. But Satan is still Satan. Now, in James chapter 2, I'd like to start at verse 18. It says, Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works. And I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God? Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works, when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought with works, and by works was faith made perfect? And the scripture was fulfilled which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. Ye see then how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works, when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way? For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. So how can Satan, personally knowing God so well, be just as lost? There is one thing that Satan does not possess. And that is love for God. Love for God. We know that he... The devils believe and tremble. We just read that verse in uh, verse 19, James chapter 2. And unfortunately, a large portion of the world falls into this category. They do not love God. And thus, they're, as Jesus would put it, child of their father, the devil. You see, each and every one of us is a child of someone. Spiritually speaking, it's either God or Satan. Now, how do we know the difference? Well, Jesus also gives us the key to that. By their fruits you shall know them. By the works that they perform. We all do works. We either practice good works habitually, or we practice evil works habitually. Now, an individual that is good or righteous, it is possible for that person to commit a, an evil work. But what happens when that occurs? That good individual must make restitution with God. Or they cease being good. Likewise, an individual that does evil works, they can give up those evil works. Start doing good works. Ultimately, by accepting salvation, following the terms thereof. But as we said, Satan does not possess the love for God that he should. Thus, he's going to be punished eternally in hell. And that is true for everyone in existence who does not possess the love of God that we, we should. How do we show that we love God? 
Well, John chapter 14, verse 15, and even 1 John chapter 5, verse 2 tells us that if, if we love God, we're going to keep His commandments. How do we keep commandments? By doing those good works. As Christians, there are things that we must do and there's things that we must abstain from. And by the fruit that we bear, one, we're going to recognize that we're faithful to God. Likewise, other people are going to know that we are faithful to God. They're going to judge us by our works. They might not understand why we do the things that we do, but they're going to recognize that we're different. They're going to recognize that this individual's not doing the same thing I'm doing. They're going to think it's strange that maybe you don't go to the bars on Friday like they do. That's a big thing. Of course, it's not even on Fridays anymore. It's every day of the week. They're going to think it's strange that you do not consume beverage alcohol. But it opens the door for a good biblical study on that matter. By their fruits you shall know them. Now this afternoon, as is customary, we do wish to offer the invitation to those who would accept. God calls us through the gospel. If you are not a Christian, why not? Unfortunately, it is evident that you do not love God as you should. And as Satan does not love God, you too will be lost when, and you are lost at this point in time. But if you continue down that path, eternally you will be lost. As Christians, we can stumble, we can allow sin back into our lives, but it doesn't have to remain there. Put away the sin, repent, confess, we'll pray for you, and be restored as a faithful child of God. If either of these apply to you at this time, please remedy your situation as together we stand and sing.